花了四年在台湾这个地方。台湾人对外国人都亲切，很喜欢住在台湾。Hi, I'm Steven. Hi, I'm Garrett. And together we are up against the wall. Taipei市的上半天，街上行人骑士步调紧凑，两位外国人轻松自在的身影穿梭在来往车流中，与拥塞街道形成一种强烈对比的违和感。这就是他们与这个城市说早安的方式。Looking at a map of Taiwan got me really excited because I saw how many countries you could visit. And I looked up the airfare and I said, wow, for $200, $300 Canadian, you could visit all, you can go to Japan, you can go to Hong Kong, Philippines. I want to go to China, I want to learn Chinese, and it seemed like Asia seems really mysterious. You hear people tell stories about, I was in China or Vietnam or somewhere, and it's like, wow, it's so different. And so, I started doing some research and I applied to go to university in Tainan. 好奇心发酵成动力。来自加拿大爱德蒙顿的 Stephen 和来自美国南加州的 Garrett 飞越半个地球来到台湾，一待就是六七个年头过去。两人在台南古城相遇，最初都是靠着教英语赚取生活费，但对他们来说，拍照更像是他们的共同语言。First weekend in Tain in Tainan, I went to uh, there's like a local bar there. I did not know anybody in there, and I walked in the bar, and I saw him sitting there, and we started talking about cameras. I remember we we saw Garrett walk in. Was, this guy, very Californian, you know, Better know. <laughs> in a good way, right? But he he comes in and instantly you make a connection. We started talking about photography, and we said, well, this weekend we're going to shoot a, a temple. You know. So you mean fighting? We said, yeah. Do you want to come along and take some photos for the magazine? 教英文收入稳定，但随着拍照的案子越接越多，兴趣越来越浓。渐渐，他们发现摄影才是他们心底真实的热情。从台湾社会名人肖清扬到时尚界模特儿 Stephen 和 Garrett， 用直觉与技术捕捉人物或品牌的完美瞬间。作品风格强烈却不脱质感，只是能不能在台湾把摄影当成职业，对两位异乡客来说是全新的体验和挑战。We had a lot of discussions about how are we going to make that happen. So it was about a year of almost full-time photography and full-time teaching. We're, yeah. we're just 90 hours a week of working. That, that was the hardest part. Even though there's two of us, I mean, we had to. You had if if you want to stay in Taiwan as a foreigner, you have to have a working permit, and it needs to be. 想要以拍照为业，留在台湾，得先解决居留证的问题。过渡期间，两人一边教英文，由雇主协助取得居留证，一天当两天用之下。终于用居留证申请到永久居留证，在台湾有了自己的摄影事业。麻雀虽小，五脏俱全的工作室就租在充满朝气的西门町，走没多远就是美国街和涂鸦墙。闲逛在商圈内 ，Stephen 和 Garrett 总能跟店家随意聊上几句。他们目前合作的对象以外国企业为主，红牛、各大国际航空公司都是他们的客户。西方风格加上说英文是绝对优势，但要进一步拓展台湾市场，沟通上仍有困难。We do get hired by local Taiwanese companies because of that. Like I want a very foreign style, a Western look. Different vision for the the shoot. And just by the nature of who we are, it yeah, we do have a different style, which we embrace. Of course, the downside of that, or maybe the the struggle to that, is that. We're still improving with our Chinese, and so sometimes we need to rely on, you know, speaking English if you really want to understand an idea that a customer wants. Foreign language culture did not prevent the two foreigners from working. They tried to find new opportunities to live abroad, as Taipei was the main focus of their work. They also often went to the nearby Hong Kong and Singapore to shoot, looking for the best market for their opportunity. We're still hired more outside of Taipei to shoot Taiwan than we are by Taiwanese people. That's it's very interesting. There's still not a lot of head offices in Taipei, right? 
international head offices in Taipei. If they're going to choose Asia, it's going to be Singapore, it's going to be Hong Kong, and Shanghai now. And that's, that's sad. I like, I'd like to see more international companies represented in Taipei. Mm -hmm. That would be wonderful for us. If you go to different markets, whether it's in the States or China, there might be an oversaturation. There's already so many people doing that that the competition is going to be really fierce. But you come to, like, in Taiwan, it's, although the competition is quite strong, there's still room for innovation. There's st it's still a young market. Yeah. 除了工作，如何深耕台湾也不容易。工作室每个月两万块左右的租金，仅仅是他们家乡的三分之一。但从租房到买房，刚刚在台北松山机场附近购物的 Garrett， 很能体会台湾年轻人的沉重负担。And it was very depressing. It was difficult because the amount of money that you spend for a house in the city, for a small 15 ping house, it's so expensive. And I had in my head, I think, oh, if I spend this much money in California or somewhere else, I could have a much bigger yes. house. Yes, but then right. maybe if you looked in downtown San Francisco or downtown LA, it would be the same amount and be just as expensive. So it was really hard to think like, wow, the price of housing in Taipei is the same as yeah, everywhere yeah, else or, or more, but the wages in Taiwan are much lower. Taiwan, as 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 Taiwan, 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 it might not be as hustle and bustle as Hong Kong or San Francisco, but there's something very Taipei about Taipei, and that's, I think, for a city to become a strong international city, it needs to retain its, its own identity. soul. Yeah, it's got to have its identity. The Stephen <laughs> Kaishuashu